Pisces Ascendant Pisces Rising, how are you? Thank you for being here to finish up your Oh, I'm ready to finish up your July 2020 video. We're going to talk about the energies. We're going to go over the frequencies. Five things. I don't know. Did I say that we were going to go over five things? Five things. Family. We're going to home, work, setting up boundaries that are great for you to reestablish emotional security. Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Rising. This is your July 2020 frequency grid. <laughs> all about you Pisces Ascendant Pisces rising there's some awesome stuff happening for you at the end of the month so I'm happy to be able to deliver that not all the signs have this because we're all going to be going through some trying times however July when we look at the grand scope of the next six months like July August September October November December out of all those months July where will likely be the best of the rest because we get a chance in this month to recalibrate some things if we play our cards right. 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, Mercury is no longer retrograding. The catch here with that Mercury no longer retrograding is that our thinking, Mercury is our thinking. It's still going to be in waters. So even though we're done thinking about something, because that's what we were doing when it was retrograding, we were rethinking what we need for our family. We were rethinking how, like who is in my family? Where's my family going to live? How do I establish emotional security? How can I have a family if so-and-so is not part of it? Who belongs in this bucket? I've just gotten rid of so many people that I thought were family. And suddenly I'm wondering, do I need anybody to be part of my family? Pisces Ascendant, you have the ability at times to be like, you know, Know what? If I got to be alone and just sit with me, sit in my own stuff, I can do it. But at the same time, you want to have a good time. You want to have fun. And so understanding that you need to have fun and people who are like-minded, people who you consider part of your tribe fit into that bucket for you. They are part of your family. You have past life his history with folks that you have a good time with. Relationships that are considered romantic and having fun with your body, um, being very creative. Things with children is a big deal. You have cancer energy. So you've got yeah, your cancer's in your fifth house. And so that's all about mom and mothering and nurturing. Do you have a job that has to do with children? Why not? It might be a good idea because you have fun with that. You have enough knowledge, enough innate understanding, enough qualities. You have past life tendencies, but this past life stuff is good. It gives you this divine feminine energy to be able to be that friend, that person who knows how to have sensitivities and understandings for others. This is a beautiful placement for a mom because you know how to have fun with your kids. Here's the thing though. If your kids aren't having fun, then you're not having fun. So if you have children, if they're arguing, if they're not getting along, this is going to cause a lot of tension and frustration. It's going to mess up your inner emotional stability, your, your sensitivity. It's going to crank up your sensitivities, but it's going to make your waters, your cancer waters, it's going to inflame them. This is what's coming. We get to the further part of the month. We get to like the last week, the 25th and on for this month, and we have Mars squaring up with Mercury. So Mars is fiery and it's in a fire sign, right? But Mars is all about my desires, my wants, what I want to go do. It's me, me, me. And it squares up with the Cancer energy, which is family right? So it's me and family and they're like, ah, uh, it's not matching, right? It's like, but this is me. Well, this is family and well, we want to do two different things and there's this combativeness that's here again, right? Let's talk about the new moon. Number four is you have the new moon in Cancer. So this means you have the new moon in your fifth house, right? The new moon's at 28, 27. So yes, if you have your own chart, go by the degrees 28, 27. That's where the sun and the moon are together. Look to see if it's in your fifth house. It should be, but it could possibly be in your sixth house. And if it is, it takes on a whole different meaning. So you have to go watch a different video. And if that's the case, comment below. I'll tell you what to go watch. Fifth house energy, children, fun, romance, creativity, how I take a risk, things I take a risk at, how I have joy, laughter, a good time, entertainment. That's all fifth house stuff. Well, you relate that to family. 
You relate that to nurturing, to mothering, to empathy, to understanding. This is that divine feminine quality coming through. This is about, I understand me, but on a greater scale, I understand the needs of humanity. And this is beautiful. This is what I love about Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Risings. They get the big picture of what we need for all of us. And having joy in life is vital to having emotional security. Emotional security is a big deal. But what do we need for emotional security? You're going to likely need family, right? And so having family, having family that gets along where there's no combativeness happening is going to be a big deal for you. That when you have a new moon in this sign, in the sign of family, in the sign of mom, in the sign of nurturing, in the sign of understanding and empathy, in the sign of sensitivities, there is this birthing process that we are going through. It's not easy, right? You talk to any woman. Birthing is not pain-free. And Mars, that's this is number three. Mars, we're going to go back to the new moon, don't worry. Mars is actually setting up tension and stress and frustration with Mercury. And what that means is the thinking and family and community. It's what I talked about earlier. It's another it's another point here. It comes up again where there's this more frustration. Number two, number two, we have Neptune coming in to help. Neptune and Mercury are going to be having good conversations. Neptune is going to be delivering with Mercury some good news. They're going to be talking and Mercury is going to say, I've got good news. Mercury for you is going, this is in the sign of cancer. So it's good news about family. Like all of a sudden either there's a truce or there's an understanding, something occurs where that all that frustration and tension, there's some sort of resolution that comes about. There's some sort of ease. But it's not, it's not, you know, it's you have to make you have to make a compromise. You have to say, okay, you have to say, all right, you have to say, okay, I'm willing to do this. It's it's not, you know, some people would say it's with strings attached to it, like you have to you know, in order to get this, you have to do this. It's going to be one of those things is that it will, there will be this Neptune effect. There's a warning. There's some nuggets. We're at number one. There's lovely communication that's occur, okay? Because it's it, there's going to be a Venus factor involved here. So what I love, who I love is also going to be conversing with Neptune, but it's a square. And so what that means is that we can have delusional love. We could have delusional ideas. N Venus and Neptune, they get along, they understand each other, but what we need to do is take that energy and understand that it's best used for creativity. It's best used to put on canvas. It's best used when we put it in writing, you know, or we, we, we write a screenplay, you know, because it's so idealistic. It's so fantastic. It's so, you know, it's almost fantastical where it's like, wow, is this real or is this fantasy? And so this kind of energy is great for creating. It's a great creative energy. However, because we're having conversations with people, because these energies happen and they come to us in the form of another human being many times, there could be somebody delivering information also where we might want to wait. Don't make any decisions. If there's any relationship commitments or decisions that are being asked to be made, you want to wait until you get into the next month. Okay. You want to wait until the sun moves into Leo. And as we get further into August, we're going to have Mercury move into Leo. Mercury will no longer be in the, in the waters of cancer where it's very emotional. Once Mercury hits Leo, you know, cause the sun will be there. Then Mercury will be there. Mercury does good in Leo information starts coming and moving really fast. It's fiery, it's ferocious, it's on point. And yeah, things are going to be very, very hot at that time. But we're going to feel more like we are speaking from our heart and having the courage to speak from our heart. So let me give you a nugget that you can walk away with here. But because the stress and the tension has to do with what you value because this is what it's going to be. Mars is going to be in your second house setting up frustrations. Mars is going to be like, but this is what I value. This is my value. So when Mars is there, it squares up with the fifth house, which is your romantic partners and your children. 
right? And it doesn't work. It's like tension and stress. But Mars also is going to send stress and frustration to your 11th house energy. And so your 11th house energy is your group energy. It's your friendships. This is also the internet. So you got to keep that in mind. There's a, a bit of my values just don't jive with the group's values, what the group wants to do. And so there's going to be a bit of finagling that kind of energy, you know, kind of juggling and trying to figure out how to make it work. But Pisces, you are the chameleon, so you can do this, okay? You just gotta recognize that your emotions and having fun, you might not be able to get all that to happen at the same time. And understanding, understanding what you need for emotional security, understanding what you need to set up and to hold sacred space is gonna be the key. This is what's gonna get you through the next six months. And so this is the nugget I want you to walk away with Pisces, is at the new moon on the 20th, on the 20th, on the new moon. Don't wait. It has to be on the new moon. I know this sounds crazy, but the moon is at such a late degree, it will be gone within four hours. What you want to make sure, let me, let me, let me give you a date. Or I mean, a, a time. I don't think I even mentioned that. The new moon happens at 1233 PM. So it's in the afternoon. So literally four hours later, the moon has now moved into the fiery Leo sign. The point of a new moon is the potency of it is when the sun and the moon are sitting on top of each other at the exact degree. It's very powerful. And at this particular new moon, we also have Saturn at the opposite end at that time. And so what that tells us is we have responsibilities. We have rules. We have restrictions. We have things that we have to do for work, right? Because this new moon, Cancer, it's all about family. But then the, your Capricorn energy, yeah, your Capricorn energy is over in that 11th house stuff, the group energy. And it's saying, but you have to do this. Right? You can't have your emotional security until you take care of this. This new moon, this is a time where it's, Kelgon, take me away. I know that I said I would take care of that, and I will. But I need to take care of myself first. Otherwise, I won't be able to take care of this. I have to do this before I can do this. And this is the universe's way of saying that is what you're supposed to do right now. You're supposed to set up the, the borders and the boundaries, and you're supposed to say, but I need to do this. This is how... I will be okay, because if I'm not okay, then I can't take care of this. And so doing that, whatever those best practices are for you, for you to keep your emotional security, for you to have your sacred space, for you to feel grounded and to feel emotionally stable, it's having a good time for you. Understand that. Finding a way to have something to laugh about, something to enjoy. If you have to connect with nature, whatever it is you do, however you do it, get creative, do whatever you got to do. But this new moon on the 20th, this energy is, and this is what I want going forward. So you get an opportunity to speak your words to the universe. This is for you. Let the universe know, this is what I need. This is what I know will help me. This is my heart energy. This is me talking from my state, my emotional sacred space, and saying, but this is who I am. And this is me showing the universe that I know how to be a, the best version of me by being the mother of me.